Muskegon, Michigan. And Muskegon is a Native American word, and it really comes from the Muskegon River. It's the Muskegon River that's so important to why Muskegon is here today. So Michigan, as you know, it's kind of shaped like a mitten, is surrounded by all of the Great Lakes. So on the top part of Michigan is where all the great forests, the white pine forests, that, that, that the whole state was covered with forests. But at the early part of our beginning, the lumber barons, they call them the lumber barons because they made a lot of money cutting down those trees. They cut the trees down, they put them on the Muskegon River, they floated them all the way down to Muskegon Lake here, the logs, and then they milled those logs at the lumber mills. There were as many as 40 lumber mills on this lake at one time. Then they put the lumber on schooners, and they sailed those schooners to Chicago. And from Chicago, the wood went everywhere. Some people are upset because they cut down all those trees, but guess what? We live in the houses that are made from those trees. So they really did need that lumber to provide housing for all of us. And then when they had the great Chicago fire, they needed even more lumber. And so they got, they cut down even more trees. Um, it is a renewable resource, so a lot of the trees have regrown. But um, the other part that you need to know about this is that these men who cut these down, these lumber barons, became very rich. And one of the richest men of all was a man by the name of Charles Hackley. And unlike the other lumber barons, he didn't leave and go off to another forest in, in North Carolina or Seattle. He stayed here because he loved this town and he wanted to make sure the town survived because a lot of lumber towns became ghost towns, literally. They were gone after the lumber was gone. But he wanted to keep his town alive. So he studied a man by the name of Andrew Carnegie, who was also a very wealthy man, and how he gave his gifts to his town, the gifts lived on and on. And so Charles Hackley wanted to do the same thing to have his gifts live on and on. So that's why we're gonna to tour the Heritage District today and you're gonna see those gifts that are still here. The first, very first gift that he gave was our public library, a beautiful building. We have one of the most famous art museums in the country and that's a thanks to his gifts there. You're gonna see a park and you're gonna see his homes. And we would not be standing here right now if it weren't for a man by the name of Charles Hackley. So let's go ahead and get um, touring the district. And as we go, I'm going to point out a lot of things for you guys to look at um, and, and notice the architecture, the historic architecture that we have here. First of all, we're at our beautiful Heritage Landing, and this is our festival grounds. So all of the festivals that take place in Muskegon take place here. And we have some of the biggest festivals in the country, some you may have heard of. There's one called Bike Time Rebel Road, and that's a motorcycle festival. We have a jazz festival. The Christian Unity Festival is one of the biggest in the country. And our Irish Festival, um, with that is very cool because the bands actually come from Ireland. So this is a big gathering place for the community. You don't see a festival coming here today, but sometimes when the ship is here, you will see the festival and can hear the music from the ship. As we cross over here, on the other side, it's hard to see right here, but this is a big uh, research center for fresh water. Um, the Great Lakes hold 20% of the world's fresh water, 20%. So it's super important that we have freshwater research center here. There are 70 scientists over there studying the water and trying to see how can we keep it healthy, how can we prevent bad things from happening like that have happened in different parts of the country, but it's critical for our whole ecosystem because if we don't have clean water, then we're not going to have great fish. This is this place is known for fishing. As a matter of fact, it's one of the top fishing destinations in the nation. Then you can see right here is the University Center um, where they're out studying and their ship, their little research vessel is out all summer long studying this. Now as we cross over here, it's little bit hard if you might be able to see the military ship as you as you peek through there um, the LST and that is open for tours and they are um, there are golf carts that are um, going back and forth so you can just either walk over there or take a golf cart over there there is a charge for that but it's it's definitely worth it um, to see the inside of a real ship there are two ships like that left in the United States we're very fortunate to have that here yes I believe they're going to be charging the seniors five dollars this year. And we're going to have a card. Patty's going to make us a card and give you that card so you can look them all up. They used to be all kind of the same, but this year they're all a little bit different, so it's going to be hard for us to memorize. So we'll make sure you have the card with you. It, 
sorry. I was gonna say it might be fair to say though too. You know, prices range between five and ten dollars. Yeah, I that'd think be great. People would get that. That'd be a good way to say it. Prices range between five and ten dollars for all of these museums, and many of the historic sites are free, so you can be on the lookout for those as well. And uh, the visitors will have information. Now, as we turn the corner, you're going to see on the left. A uh, building called the Amazon building. That's the big building. It has nothing to do with Amazon. That was the Amazon <laughs> knitting mill. Yes. That was one of the first uh, manufacturers that came to Muskegon after the lumber was gone. Charles Hackley tried to recruit that company here. They actually made women's hosiery. And so that's what they were famous for. Uh, but also, we made here in Muskegon was the Raggedy Ann doll. I think it was made at the knitting mill. Yes, Pat? It was it called the Breakable? Company, but I think it was located there. It was located in there. So the Raggedy Ann doll was made here, but not Raggedy Andy. We uh -huh. do not know. I think they know why at the Heritage Museum, which is coming up. This is one of the stops that we recommend, the Heritage Museum. Um, they are just awesome. Uh, they have so many things in there that are of interest to you, and they guarantee you leave with a smile. So you're going to see bowling balls and bowling pins, a steam engine, a lot of their, it looks small, but there's actually 10,000 square feet. It's basically just the right size to have a nice tour and see everything that's old about Muskegon and um, learn a lot about the industries that were here. I can't even go on and on about everything that's in there. Yes. There is an elevator in there, isn't there? There is an elevator? That's yes, a good question. Is. Thank you. It is a small elevator. Yes, it is. Um, it is worth it. The, the, to spend the time there. We'll just go ahead and keep going. On the left, is that the left, guys? No, that's the right. Okay, <laughs> it's going to be tricky. On the left, you're going to see the first of many gardens on the right. Um, this is a little memorial garden by Mrs. Babbitt. Mrs. Babbitt owned this empty lot, and it really was a sand lot, and the city pressured her to do something about it because it didn't look good. Well, her husband had recently died, and so she decided it to be a memorial garden. And now there's all kinds of memorial messages by different people on the benches that they've donated for that, that little park. And so it ended up being a very happy family, happy story for our community to turn an empty lot into a memorial garden. This is the building that she owns as well. We're trying to talk her into doing something with it, but she, she likes to keep it again because of her husband. This is one of the, the breweries, the new breweries in town. And definitely the passengers, they're not really interested in eating a lot here because they get a lot of food that's off the record on the ship, but they are interested in having a beer. So uh, you will see, uh, make sure you point out the Pigeon Hill Brewery, and it's a great place. For, this is where a lot of the local people hang out. It's very pleasant to sit outside there. As we head up, you see our sports arena on one side, but the other side I want to point out this sculpture because this is a sculpture to honor the man that invented the snowboard. Um, his name, uh, Mr. Poppin, is still alive, but he really started this by, see the guy at the top? He, uh, it was an old water ski, and he tied a rope to it. His kids, it was on Christmas break, and his kids were driving him crazy. And to keep him busy, he let them take that water, old water ski and go down a hill. They had such a blast. He worked on it and perfected it, sold it to Brunswick, and ultimately now is the snowboard, and he's considered the father of snowboarding. The woman so, at the top. Oh, the it's woman. a woman at the top? His, his daughter. Oh, his daughter, because she was one of the kids. Yeah. There's a little shop right there, by the way, brand new shop. As we go into this next area, you're going to see the big Frauenthal. That's our theater. And uh, the theater is often open uh, with, at 3 o'clock in the afternoons. You may be able to hear an organ, uh, an organ demonstration. Well worth it, and that is free. There's also a sculpture here of Buster Keaton. And Buster Keaton is a silent film star, if you didn't know that. And he spent his summers in Muskegon. He did not have a very happy life, if you read the story of his life. But the one thing he talks about that's positive with all his fond memories of Muskegon, and we have a Buster Keaton Film Festival here every year in the fall. Mm -hmm. The big sculpture in the middle, we're very proud of that. That is a famous uh, sculptor from Chicago named Richard Hunt, African-American man who we recruited and paid him quite a bit of money uh, mm -hmm. to make that sculpture to signify a new beginning for our town. Uh, because we were rebuilding our town, and that name of the sculpture is Together Muskegon Rising. 
Now, as you head over here, you can see some of the new buildings in our downtown. We, we have a culinary school that's just over there that's quite well known, award-winning uh, culinary school. But as we get up into this section, uh, you, this is where we used to have a mall. There was a mall that covered this street, you know, an old-fashioned shopping mall. A lot of cities did that. The, the, a lot of the passengers will go and nod their heads because they did it in their cities. But this is where um, we cleared the mall and we started all over to create a, a new downtown. And uh, you see a few blank spaces because that's where we're still selling lots, but we have a lot of new businesses here already. These were historic buildings that have been renovated. We have another brewery right over here. Nice little coffee shop if you want to stop for some coffee. Nice shops inside the old Century Club. The Century Club was that old men's club from many years ago, but now the top floor is a destination wedding ballroom, and they actually have been written up in Bride Magazine. We also have right here is one of our new distilleries that just opened this summer, and we're excited about that. But we are trying to invent a downtown for the young people, the next generation, and so we're super excited that this young couple opened Root Down. So it's a juice bar and a yoga studio, and so we really, really are trying to be a city in the future, even though we are trying to honor our past. And the funnest thing happening right now is the new Western Market. These shops just opened this summer, and there's all kinds of uh, little fun stuff that you can get here. Some sweets, as well as clothing, children's, uh, children's uh, gifts and clothing, and uh, oh, just a variety of things. Some artwork, there's jewelry, um, some handmade woven things. We're super excited about to have our little Western Market. Behind it is some beach volleyball. There are tons of beach volleyball going on at the beach, but we thought we'd bring some of that beach volleyball downtown, so you'll see kids playing beach volleyball all summer long. Aren't they adorable? They are. And they're really cute inside. inside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I need to. We're excited well, about that. Kind of whitewash, like, like wood. Yes. Are the like, guests like, going to have that downtown heritage map? Like, yes, the guests are provided with a map, but then some people uh, forget about their maps. So we always have try to have maps on the trolleys, and then we want to have the maps at the, at the stations as well. And then, of course, here's some more artwork, as well as the children's fountain, which will be going all summer long. It starts at 11 o'clock. Um, this is a new rental building. We're super excited that we're going to have some upscale rentals for our young professionals downtown. That's underway right now. And we're going to be turning here at this particular corner. And we do turn here because as you go a little bit further, it doesn't necessarily look like a heritage district. So we do turn right here. We point out the farmer's market, the second largest farmer's market in Michigan. You are in a fruit belt right now. Blueberries, cherries, strawberries, you name it, they're all here in Michigan. So this is an amazing farmer's market. It is open today on Thursday. Um, I'm sorry, it is not open on Sundays. Um, but as we turn here, uh, for those of you that do like gourmet food or just like cheese, even regular cheese, you may want to stop at the, the cheese lady and they give you cheese tastings and they wrap things up so that you can bring them back to the ship. There's one thing I'm brand new to it. I'm going to have restaurant menus for all the restaurants. So if somebody asks, oh, what's good here? I'll have some. 